everybody, this is Pastor Jennifer, and we want to welcome you to this week's episode of Meet Me in the Break Room. We are so excited today uh, to have with us Mr. Carl and Miss Kathy Lucier. Uh, and we met them a couple of years ago. Uh, they have a ministry called Kids Turn. And uh, as you see, we've got a grand set behind us. Uh, but they came to have camp with our children a uh, year before last, and they're back this year. And I'm telling you, we have seen children give their hearts to the Lord. We have seen families reconciled. We have seen all kinds of things happen during our time of ministry with Kids Turn. And uh, so we are so glad to have you guys here with us today. And uh, we have been so impacted by your ministry um, that I really just kind of wanted to take a few moments and just sit down and just talk about how God birthed kids turn in your hearts. Uh, another thing that has been so impressive to me is that your children work alongside you in ministry, uh, which is indeed such a blessing. Um, they didn't become casualties of the call, uh, but God brought them alongside you and they support what you do. Um, but let's just talk about maybe um, when you first began to feel the call of God upon your life and then how that transitioned into primarily feeling called to children and to families. Started uh, when I was in the military. Okay. Um, well, I was a drunk. An alcoholic. Wow. wow. <laughs> and I started drinking at a young age and went in the military. Anyways, I tell people I went in there and uh, mm -hmm. uh, a drunk became an alcoholic and I came out a Christian. Wow. <laughs> wow. Which is usually a flip flop from what usually happens to people. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so it, while I was in there, um, I, you know, I, I got out and I went to this uh, down in Florida. I was mm -hmm. with a friend who was in the Navy with and mm -hmm. he. Um, kept inviting me to church and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and I was in the Navy Alcohol Rehab Center and he kept okay. inviting me to church. And finally I went to church and, mm -hmm. and uh, on a Wednesday night down there in Orange Park, Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, gave my heart to Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and then uh, from there it was no looking back, you know. Yeah. It was a, a true conversion experience. Mm -hmm. I um, was wrestling, I was kind of sensing on my heart a call to the mm -hmm. ministry after you know serving mm -hmm. the Lord for a little while as a Christian mm -hmm. uh, in the last part of the time I was in the military and then uh, he uh, he just said uh, well actually a lady prophesied over me one time yeah, yeah. and she said uh, she says I've not called you to man's army but I've called you to my army wow. <laughs> uh, even though I was in the Navy yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> I got yeah. the idea right right so I fairly sensed a call to the ministry mm -hmm. and uh, from there I went uh, went home and, and uh, met my lovely wife here, Kathy, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of leaving out some things, but you know, she mm -hmm. was uh, she was working uh, at Mananoc Bible Conference up in New Hampshire doing puppet ministry. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I liked her. So mm -hmm. if I like her, I got I got to kind of like what she's doing, right? Right, so, right. So I mean, I never worked a puppet in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. and so I I. Uh, <laughs> I, I went to the conference with her and, and helped her out and did it side by side and and then uh, then one day in, in, in New Hampshire we were, mm -hmm. there was a lady there doing uh, uh, a ministry Gayla mm -hmm. Kirsten mm -hmm. and she was doing a ministry in our home church uh, VBS mm -hmm. and she her theme was let's climb mountains with Jesus mm -hmm. and uh, I can still remember the jingle to this day and um, <laughs> she. I walked out of the church and I looked at Kathy and I said, you know what? We could do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just mm -hmm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And another time the Lord said, you know, I was asking the Lord, what do you want me to do in my life? I know you've called me to ministry. I kind of felt like I was going to be an evangelist, but I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> it just said, the Lord kind of just said, what's in your hand? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I yeah. mean, it was like Moses, you know, God asked absolutely. Moses, what's in your hand? You know, God will mm -hmm. take whatever we have. Absolutely, he will. Yes. And use it if we'll give it to him. And absolutely. so it was just a simple puppet. And that was kind of the birth of, of Kids Town. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? <laughs> that is that is phenomenal. So so we'll go back to some of the beginning of what you were, were discussing, uh, a moment in your life where um, you were, were bound by alcoholism. Kind of what was the thing that, that 
brought you to the end of that, that thing that made you desire change? Hitting bottom. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like I said, I was in the military. I, I missed a pre-flight mm -hmm. to get back to, uh, I, was in, I was in naval aviation mm -hmm. uh, in Jacksonville, Naval Air Station. I flew into P3s as an air crewman. Mm -hmm. And I missed a pre-flight because I was downtown getting loaded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I got a, kind of arrested in Jacksonville bus station when I was heading mm -hmm. back to the thing mm -hmm. for singing in a loud voice. <laughs> <laughs> that one always gets me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Why are you in the drunk tank? Well, singing in a loud voice. It's <laughs> okay. So uh, evidently I disturbed the peace, uh, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, just, uh, I don't know, just, just feeling like I hit bottom. I said, something's mm -hmm. got to change. And yeah. As a matter of fact, I do, I do remember I was on my bed and, and I said, Lord, if you're real. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up in a Lutheran church as a child and, mm -hmm. and I believed in God, you know, mm -hmm. I believed in the Ten Commandments, you know. Mm -hmm. I went for the cookies and the punch yeah, as a child. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so never under, underestimate what God can use. But right. um, mm -hmm. um, I remember saying to the Lord, I says, if you're real, you got to help me. Yeah. And those were my words. Huh? Yeah. But but that's, that's the real thing there. And I, I wanted to go back to that just for a moment because so many times there are people who see people in ministry and they really don't know the mm. transformation they see the end result right. but they don't <clears throat> they don't know many times the process mm. um that people went through to get, there, yeah. to, get to that That's point true. you know and so many times people will observe people at a certain place in ministry and they'll look at themselves and say but but i could never do that or i could never be that and right. so I love when people share the stories that, you know, you may see me in this place now, but right. this Wasn't place always. where I am is not where I started, yes. you know, that yeah. there was. Sometimes we see things and they look good in yeah. the lives of other people, That's right. but we don't understand the, the price that was paid yeah. uh, to really get that. So, um, so you I mean, met. I might just add. Sure. I, I might, I'm sorry. I, I just might add that God answered that prayer mm -hmm. because I, uh, I was in the Navy Alcohol Rehab Center. Mm -hmm. trying, you know, helping with the addiction. Right. But the Lord answered that prayer and he put me back in the barracks next mm -hmm. to one of the few Christians that I knew of in, yes. the, in, the, in the squadron. Uh -huh. So it was like I had a Christian next door kept inviting me to church, kept inviting mm -hmm. me to church, you know, mm -hmm. to come. And I, you know, and I kept saying no because I had stopped the alcohol, mm -hmm. but at that point I was doing marijuana, you know, gotcha. smoking weed. So mm -hmm. I thought I would I overcome the real problem, but I hadn't. Right, the right. Re the real problem, I didn't love myself. Yeah. But so then when I gave my life to the Lord, the Lord began to show me mm -hmm. that people that don't love themselves in a health, healthy way right. abuse themselves. Yes. In many ways. Yes. Mine was alcohol, and then mm -hmm. it, it could have led to something else. But right. Yeah. So anyways, I just wanted to say that, you know, the Lord just kind of directed that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's it's amazing to me how God will continually put people in your path yes. to continue extending that invitation, yes. you know, and they're being used by God because it's actually God continually extending the yes, invitation, is, you know, yes. saying, here I am, <laughs> you know, ready to help. And uh, so that's that's a beautiful story. So then you met Miss Kathy yeah. and she was already doing children's ministry by yeah. way of puppets yeah. and those kinds of things and so you witnessed someone else doing children's ministry so what really solidified the call i mean i know god uses you because because every time you guys minister it's not just to the children who are there you know the adults are drawn in by the humor by the different presentations that are made you know you're preaching the unadulterated word of god in a way that anyone can understand That's taking right. deep truths and simplifying them you know, so that even a child can understand. Mm -hmm. But what kind of um, solidified your call to children and to families? That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, well, we were up in Maine. Mm -hmm. First of all, we started out getting the blessing of our home pastor, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. up in New Hampshire, in New England. And we 
saw this thing, Kids Crusades, and so we got their recommendation, we sent letters out, we started doing uh, even youth rallies, just little puppet right. shows at youth rallies. I think that was one of the first things we did. Mm -hmm. And then um, we got a call from the district uh, mm -hmm. and said, uh, you know, come to our camp. And, mm -hmm. And I got froze. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, the <this> Lord, no! <laughs> well, no, just getting started, you know. Right, right. So the director of the camp uh, up there in Maine said, uh, "Why don't you come see me?" You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did. We spent a weekend, I think, wasn't it? Uh, Jean and Judy. Yeah. Jean and Judy. And they had done it for years. They had done Kiss Crusades. They were they were amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget the question he asked. He said. Are you using this for a stepping stone to the pastor? Wow. Wow. And uh, I says, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. You know, I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. early. You know, I just, I've always felt this way. Lord, just lead me. Right. You know, right. I'm going to do my best to do what you want me to do. Right. What you put in my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and then obey. You yes. Know? And so he's... The will of God for me is simple. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you know, you pray and you do what he says today. And, right. and then the will of God unfolds. It's mm -hmm. not something he lays out for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he says he said to me that. I said, no, I don't think so. And so and he was the director of the camp. And so we did the camp and, and um, you know, it proceeded from from there, we, we got more meetings, and mm -hmm. then, uh, I, I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> I got, well, so we I were tried. just talking about how did you solidify, solidify, yeah, you know, I your mean, call to children, to families. Yeah, to, it was, it was, um, it was just like, again, a progression, right, um, of just being obedient, opening mm -hmm. the doors that he opened, we walked through, right, we had a house for a year, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Marlboro, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and uh, we sold that, when he called us to go out and do kids' crusades, we mm -hmm. traveled in a, a Chevy station wagon, and mm -hmm. we had a back in those days we had just a snowmobile trailer. Uh huh. You in the south don't know what those are, but <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Snow double wide snowmobile trailer, and uh -huh. her dad who helped mm -hmm. me box it in, mm -hmm. and we had Elmer on the side, and it's bright right. yellow, and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, we went to the churches, you know, and it, at that point it was just, um, I, you know. Maybe the summer that we did, yeah. and maybe a little bit of the spring. Mm -hmm. From there, though, it, 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 we thought when we sold the house and burnt the bridges behind us, this mm -hmm. was it. Yeah. But yeah. it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, from there, we ended actually up, ended at one of the churches in Caribou, Maine, mm -hmm. becoming the children's pastor there. Yeah. And, uh, and youth pastor. Mm -hmm. So we spent some time there. Then I became a senior pastor mm -hmm. north of there for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, Felt to, uh, went back to the church in, in Caribou for another four years. We were there the, a year the first time. Mm -hmm. Then um, I was just praying and, and seeking the Lord, and out of that came a, a call to Barton, Vermont, where we mm -hmm. pastored there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kathy, of course, did children's ministry in each of those places. And she, mm -hmm. She's really good with the young ones. Yes, right? yes. Right? Absolutely, I she agree. Is, she's got a gift for the young kids. Uh, mm -hmm. She can... <laughs> She's mm -hmm. amazing, you know, in, in that. And, uh, but yeah, so it just kind of unfolded. And then, uh, you know, I knew, like I said, I mm -hmm. knew I was called. Yes. We don't always know what that means. Right, right, right. You know? And then from Barton, Vermont, um, <laughs> it was funny because we had an evangelist come. Mm -hmm. And he knew our ministry, mm -hmm. and children. Right, right. And he, he looked at me when he came, and, and I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. and he looked at me and he says, he says, Carl, your heart's back out on the road, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and God had I'm already. I'm sorry, been... you're bringing up. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's amazing when you just look at how faithful God is and yeah. how His hand is there along the way, and how He gives those promptings and those dealings, and then He's so gracious to come mm. back and give confirmation. Yeah. You know, to let exactly. you know that's really exactly. my voice. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm ordering your steps. Yes. You know, and. Uh, it's it's so important that that we allow him to do that, yeah. but um, you know it's it's just so refreshing in this day and time. And um, I know you know as a believer, you know our children are encountering things mm -hmm. in this day and in this time yeah. so much earlier than we encountered them. Right. And you know you you really as as ministers and leaders and 
people who find the importance in really getting that foundation laid into the heart of a child, we realize we are coming up against more than than ever, right. you know. Right. Um, and there are so many things that are bombarding our children. You know, they are overloaded with information, sensory overload, yet lacking wisdom. Right. You know, yeah. and yeah. the Bible tells us to train up a child in the way they should go. Right. And when they're old, you know, they will not depart from it. And I love that. That's kind of part of your story. That yes, I, I was brought up in church. Um, you know, but but I strayed away. Yeah. But there was there was still something about the hand of God upon your life that right. even at your lowest point, right. you know, came to your rescue. Yes. You know, and um, I think that it's so important because because you know when I was coming up as a child, we didn't have sports on Sundays. Mm -hmm. We didn't have you know sports were certain days of the week, but Sunday was for church. Yeah. Wednesday was yeah. for church. Yeah. There there were priorities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're living in a day and time now where it seems like um, church is is something that gets fit in when it's convenient, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, just by nature of the world in which we live, I, I know more than ever that it is so important that we are laying that foundation mm -hmm. into the hearts of the children, you know, really teaching them um, their identity in Jesus Christ, what that yeah. means for their life, preparing them, equipping them, mm -hmm. You know, making sure they have an ear to hear and a heart to obey. And um, it's evident that that takes place through the ministry that God has given you. Um, and I think so many times just in, in churches as a whole, we have not maybe always given the attention to children's ministry that we should. Yeah. Uh, for me, children's ministry is just as important as adult ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, because we are raising up the next generation, you know, and we can't wait till they're our age to start doing that. They need to be being prepared now. Yeah. You know, we need young people who can stand for Jesus Christ right now, uh, that there be a representation in every school, in every, you know, area of life. And so, uh, and these kids now, they're amazing. They're, they're so smart. They're yeah. so intellectual, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but... We, we want them to employ that, you know, for the Lord's work. Um, what really brought you to the place that you began doing children's ministry at this level? I mean, because this well, is next level ministry. It, 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 it evolved. Um, yeah. It, and it evolved through our children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, when we started, that was just Kathy and I, you know, the flannel right. boards and the overhead mm -hmm. projector and the living stories and mm -hmm. Betty Luke and fan, fan, flannel felts and mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. like that. And we felt like we were high tech back then. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so as time went on, uh, the kids were born. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, as they grew, uh, and, and they began to offer their talents. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. And when you, when you see this behind me, that's, uh, you know, a largely, not largely, is my son, Matthew, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. who still travels with us. So we have right. uh, four children, two boys, two girls. Mm -hmm. uh, my oldest son, uh, Sam, he's mm -hmm. back home in West Virginia at our home church, and he does, he still helps us out. He's the worship and media pastor, and he does the soundtracks, and, mm -hmm. you know, so God gifted him in music and, and, mm -hmm. and video, right. and uh, and Matt was gifted with uh, graphic design and, and, and mm -hmm. whatnot, and, and so he's he's the one that designs the sets mm -hmm. that we have as our backdrop, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, the, and everything you see on the screens, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he... Right. He, he just started with Corel Draw, you yeah. know, and started playing around. He was self-taught. They were homeschooled because we were traveling yeah. on the road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, he just began to, you know, we, I think we bought him his first, was it Corel Draw 4, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was used, I think. <laughs> and he took that and ran with it. Yeah. And uh, the guy's, he's got a gift. Yeah, uh, he's got, he's very creative. Uh, but but it's evident to me as someone who's been able to observe you as a family, uh, your children traveling with you, that you imparted to them a love for yeah. God and a love for the things of God. You know, and so for maybe mothers and fathers right now who are saying, "How do I give my children the, the love for God that I have?" What would you say to that? I would just say to pray. Mm -hmm. To pray for them. <laughs> and be real. 
I think, yeah. pray and be real, because God is real. And He is as close to you. Your answers are as close as a prayer way. That's right. So many times I'm like, God, I don't understand this, mm -hmm. whether it's raising my children or mm -hmm. or doing kids' church. And I would just go, mm -hmm. I don't understand. Can you give me the answer? Right. And within a couple weeks, usually, mm -hmm. He will bring something to me that has the answer that it's only God. Right, right. I, I think that that is so key. You know, I know for me personally, uh, I would not be where I am in ministry had I not had parents praying for me. Yeah. You know, um, I think everybody faces challenges. Um, the challenges of growing up, the challenges of just facing life and navigating you know, from being a child to being an adolescent to being a young adult to, you know, growing into adulthood. Um, and so that, that there's a burden there, uh, a blessing and a burden. Um, but, but I can honestly say I know the power of prayer because yes. I've had, you know, a praying grandmother. I've had a wow. praying mother, a praying father, um, you know, who not only prayed, but let me know they were praying. You know, and, and even in seasons of life where I didn't want to hear that they were praying, uh, <laughs> you know, they were still telling me, but I'm praying for you. Yeah. You know, um, I can also say I had parents who were not afraid to correct me, yeah. you know, and I think sometimes mm -hmm. we're so busy trying to be liked by our children no. <laughs> uh, that, that we forget to bring correction, you know, loving correction, but correction, you know, mm -hmm. and um, um, but. So, you know, we've talked about the, the fact that you were connected to headship. You, you um, not only were a pastor, but you had a pastor and you had people speaking into your life. You had people pouring into you. Yes. Um, you, you had a love for the Lord because of what he had done in your life. Uh, you shared that and imparted that mm -hmm. to your children. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say for people, maybe pastors who are watching, uh, or maybe there are, you know, some some youth pastors or people working in children's church, and they're saying, you know, I want to have a great children's ministry. I want to have a great youth ministry, but I, I have a heart for God, but I don't know where to start. What would what would you tell them? Oh boy. Um, well, for us, it was the family thing. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so as far as I think in, in the church, we, we put on a facade. Yeah. I'm not sure this is going to answer your question, but I, mm -hmm. I feel like I need to say this, is that sure. be real. Yes. Be real. Yes. And that's one thing I like about you, Pastor Jeff. Well, thank you. Thank Two you. years ago, you know, you pastor a large church, you mm -hmm. got, you know, a great, great congregation, and, mm -hmm. but you had the heart, you have the heart for the kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And be, that impressed me mm -hmm. and my whole family. Yeah, that yeah. yes, you were one thing over there, mm -hmm. but when Camp 360 started, you were over here. Yeah, yeah. Being with the Jesus. kids, Absolutely. being Jesus to the kids. Absolutely. And the heart of the pastor, or the, excuse me, the, the course mm -hmm. of the church mm -hmm. can only follow the vision in the heart of the pastor. Right. So if the pastor, or the leaders of the church, don't have a true heart for kids, mm -hmm. or they think it's just something to fill in time or check something off on the schedule because yeah. you got some parents in there that you want to appease. Yeah, or, or get the kids out of the <laughs> way the so we can have oh, church. I've had pastors yeah. say that yeah. to me. Yeah. They'll, say, they'll say, okay, now, glad that's over. Now we can get down to real ministry. And I'm going, oh, this my is real Lord, ministry. as this... much as you've done it under the least of these, Absolutely. Jesus said you've done it under me. Yeah, and, and that's How really what, separate that? that's what brought me into ministry okay. was as a child coming up, not only was I living in the home, you know, of a pastor, mm -hmm. uh, my mom and dad doing ministry, but there were people in the ministry mm -hmm. uh, facilitating ministry for children, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I grew up where we were having revival every other week, you know, mm -hmm. we would have six week revivals, yeah. you know, so I grew up doing homework under the pews, you know, I grew up <laughs> yeah. uh, loving, as we call it, big church, right. you know, and loving children's church, yeah. but but we were taught at an early age that church was for everybody sure. and that everybody mattered. Right. You know, and so we, we grew up with vacation Bible school and mm -hmm. we grew up. So by the time I was 14, mm -hmm. I was helping facilitate mm -hmm. vacation Bible school. I was planning camps, yeah. you know, and yeah. 
those kinds of things. And so I've always had a love for it. And, and those children that, that we poured into, they had a love for the church, you yeah. know, so it was, it, it was relational. Yeah, when I went, and, to, when I went to Caribou, they, they hired me as the children's pastor, you mm -hmm. know, and when I first went there, and, and I'm the youth pastor and the children's, and the children's pastor at the same time, doing both hats. Right, right. So, but when I went there, it's like, the, it was like the board wanted somebody to come in and wave a wand mm -hmm. with all these teens. Mm -hmm. So the Lord showed me to pour my heart into I wasn't going to do much for those teens. Right, right. You know, I mean, I'd do mm -hmm. my best. Yeah, yeah. But my heart, the Lord told me, you know, put on my heart to just pour into those junior age kids. You right, know, right. The mi middle school, we call I guess, today. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, pour into them because mm -hmm. they're going to be your leaders in your youth group. So I had a, I had a good thing and a bad thing. It was a hard wearing right. two hats. Mm -hmm. But I had influence over the not only the youth, but the children coming up who were going to be in my youth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so by pouring into those younger age kids, mm -hmm. you know, you know, uh, change. I'm not sure. I yeah, I, I think it's it's. We were just talking about um, um, really developing, you know, children's ministries yeah, and it youth ministries with, it that are as young effective. as you can. Yeah, absolutely. It starts in the nursery. I believe that absolutely. Because I do. because the atmosphere kids pick up on that and everything mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Even from the womb, I believe that, mm -hmm. that the emotional state of the mom and that's what they're going through right. is affecting that child. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw that. She she played mm -hmm. Christian music when they were born. Right, you know, right. So I, I, with Sam, especially, he, it was constant. She was, she mm -hmm. was working at home and right. stitching uh, stuff, mm -hmm. stuffed animals and she was playing constant Christian music. Mm -hmm. Well, Sam's now got a gift of music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, so... Start as young as you can. Nursery school, you know, mm -hmm. is, is the nursery is just uh, an environment where the kid has the first impression of what church is like mm -hmm. because it's a spirit thing. That's right. It, it definitely <laughs> is. You know, and in that, that environment of love, and the, they kids sense, right. you know, mm -hmm. uh, what's going on around them yes. uh, more than we realize, and uh, of course they grow into that mm -hmm. but start as young as you can yeah. you know and um you know and again it starts in the family there's no the church is not a substitute for the family right right and uh the church can enhance that and you know mm -hmm. come alongside the mm -hmm. family but that's where our real problem i think today is is yeah. the breakdown and i'm not alone in that but yeah yeah uh, absolutely the family breakdown is it's, mm -hmm. it's you know when jesus was here he said the spirit of antichrist yes is already in the world yes and, and we're seeing that we're seeing today. more than ever yes. right now. And that's where the yes. battle is for the church. That's and right. The of God. Yeah. And that's why the family's being fought so hard. Exactly. Um, Fragment the family. Yeah. Because God designed the family. Yes, he did. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> he designed yeah. the family. And the yeah. enemy, uh, you know, mm -hmm. wants to disrupt that in any way he can, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, there's so much to it that we could spend a, 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 a lot of time on that. But yeah, before we're anything, we're sons and daughters. Yes, you know, um, and I think so many times that's that's where people even miss the importance of church is is having our identity rooted because when our identity is rooted yeah, yeah, then our spirit good. gets established very, very good. That's good. and there yeah. are a lot of people who are not established they're constantly running to and fro mm -hmm. because their identity is never settled yeah. as a son or as a daughter right. you know an heir of God a right. joint heir right. with Jesus Christ yeah. if we never get that settled yeah. we're forever broken fragmented you know, impulsive, yeah. Yeah. you know, and so I think I, I think you said something very key too a while ago when you were talking about uh, even even the nursery and yeah. toddlers. You know, we are shaping hearts, we are shaping yeah. minds, and yeah. what they experience yeah. even then yeah. forms their perception of what church is and what the body of Christ right. is. Right. And uh, Jesus. yes, the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus flowing to this. You know this kids. absolutely. And if they're not experiencing that kind of love anywhere, they ought to be able to experience that mm -hmm. in the house of the Lord. Yeah. You know. Amen. You know, as, I, as we're talking and as I think about this, you know, all of this is mm -hmm. a result, really, of family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, I had the call, but. As the family came along, they contributed. We we never forced them to stay on the road with us, right, right. You know, as long as they have. Right. We always wanted them to know the door was open. Sure. And I think a big thing for for parents to to, 
to know Christian parents particularly, you know, is is try to be real. Yes. Yeah, I, I go back to that. Yes. Don't be fake. You let them see your failures. Mm -hmm. Let them see how you deal with your failures. Mm -hmm. Be mm -hmm. honest with them. Yeah. But so many times we want to be an example that we end up putting on a facade. Yeah. And they see through that. Absolutely. They see through that. Something that you just said too. Um, one of the things the Lord has really been dealing with me about during this this pandemic. Um, because I like probably every other pastor in America, you know, have, have, you know, asked and just said, Lord, what are you doing? It's not that I don't trust what he's doing. I just want some understanding, some insight, you yeah. know, and, but one of the things I really feel like the Lord has, has been impressing upon my heart during this time is that there's, there's a great shift taking place in the body of Christ that God is moving us from a more um, industrialized and denominational structure into a more relational structure mm -hmm. where it's it's family. it's not a, <laughs> yes a family absolutely um and i yeah. think sometimes and and lord knows i'm not trying to bash no, anybody of course not. Uh, it's, it's it's not about any of that no. but sometimes people have become more indoctrinated to a denomination yeah. than they have been transformed by Bible. Right. You know, and sometimes we give children a love for an institution mm. more than we give them a yeah. love for the Lord. It's true. You know, and uh, I feel like I feel like in this in this stage God is showing us everything that we have allowed to become an idol. Yeah. Everything that we have allowed to be a barrier right. to our relationship right. with Jesus Christ. Right. Um, you know, because we've allowed a lot of things to become a distraction. Mm -hmm. You know, in some areas, what was meant to be a bridge has become a focus and has become a distraction. Mm -hmm. And really kind of, we started having surrogate relationships with the Lord through <laughs> other people. We want everybody else to do the praying, the yeah. studying, the, yeah. you know, and then we just glean off of that. Yeah. But no, we've all got to have our own relationship Absolutely. with the Lord. And I think that, that that is what makes this so important, you know, uh, ministry to children and doing it well. Yeah. You know, giving God our all, giving Him the best, loving Him with our mind mm -hmm. means using our intellectual power sure. to serve him. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. what can we do for him? That was one of the things that really hit me during this pandemic. What do we have that we're not using mm -hmm. for the glory of God? Yeah. What what has God blessed us with that's laying in a closet dormant? Yeah. What you know, so we started pulling puppets out, we started pulling, <laughs> you know, just trying to make use of everything we had sure. to get the message of the gospel out, yeah. you know. And, and that desire had been there, but the time was not there because we were so busy, yeah. you know, and I, I can't say that I haven't been busy during the pandemic, but <laughs> I've been a different Probably kind of more busy. busy. Right, right. I, I've been more busy, but I, it hasn't been jumping planes, going to other cities yeah. to preach. And it's been yeah. pastoring my own church. Right. You know, it's, it's the Lord's church, but, sure. but pastoring the church where he put me yeah. to serve. But, yeah. um, you know, that's that's one thing I think is all about getting back to the heart of what it means to have true relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and what that what relationship produces within yeah. us. That's what he died for. Yeah. 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 Well, um, I know that there are going to be some some youth leaders, some children's church pastors, um, maybe some people who haven't even gotten started yet. You know, maybe like you, they were feeling the call. Mm -hmm but didn't know exactly how that was going to play out. Right. Um, but before we go today, I want to, number one, um, just ask if there's anything else that you would like to say to, to pastors, to youth pastors, to children's church pastors, to moms and dads. I want to give you that opportunity. And then number two, I want us to close out just praying for those who have a heart mm -hmm. to minister to children. Um, and even pray for those who maybe didn't have something like this in place, who, who missed what church was all about. Mm -hmm. uh, let's pray that, that God would continue extending that invitation to them like he has continued to extend to you, to me, um, you know, and pray that, that maybe even through this interview, somebody would, would come back to Jesus. Yeah. I just want to say that um, this set is... I often refer to it as the burning bush, yeah. you know, with Moses. Uh, God, 
uh, used the burning bush to get um, Moses' attention. Yeah. But then God spoke his word out of the bush. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I can't duplicate what God does, obviously. <laughs> or we can't, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, but so this is, you know, kind of relevant to where kids are at today. And so the flash is, is for that reason, to get their attention mm -hmm. so that they will listen to me when it comes time to the Word of God. If they think I'm cool, they're going to be more apt to listen to me, even as an old 66-year-old man, you know. Um, so and I, somebody says, how long are you going to do it? And I says, well, until God says not to. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, just don't feel like you have to be um, perfect, you mm -hmm. know. Um, be real with the kids. Mm -hmm. Be sincere with the kids. Mm -hmm. Don't do it as a job. Right. If you're doing it as a job, they'll see right through it. Yeah. you got to genuinely love them. Yeah. Now, i got to have to say, I'm not the the hands-on, play-with-the-kids kind of guy. And mm -hmm. kind of, God, why did you call me mm -hmm. to children's ministry? You uh -huh. know, she's more that than yeah. I am. Yeah. Um, but God has given me a heart for them in their development, in their mm -hmm. relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. so um, just, just be real to them. You know, love on them. They'll remember how you treated them a lot longer than what you said to them. Yes. 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 I guess that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that that's major too for them to always know church is a safe place. Yeah. And there's always a place for them to land yeah. uh, where they can be loved, yeah. where they can be nurtured. Yeah. It and, reminds me of, a, it reminds me of a, a saying I heard. I don't know where it came from, who said it, but it says uh, it, that uh, people will remember how you made them feel. Yes. Okay. Yes. But how's that go? <laughs> I forgot now. People remember. How, no, people will. People will forget what you said, but they'll never. Or, or, never know, forget, forget how, how you, how made, you made, made them feel. feel. That's, that's right. That's Maya yeah. Angelou. Yeah. Who's that? Who said that? Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou. Uh -huh. I yep. said, boy, that is good. Yes. You know, Absolutely. and even in my relationship with my wife, you mm -hmm. know, I'm going, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. She can forget all the things I do for her, but she'll never forget how I make her feel. That's right. That's right. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Have I messed up? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the same with kids. You know, people. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. They'll never, you know, so if they can have a good time in church, yeah. they yeah. may forget the verse. Yeah. They may forget the Bible story. Mm -hmm. But if they have a good feeling of being in church, right. they'll go far. Being loved, being love. cared for, yeah. being protected. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then they'll share that with someone else. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's uh, wonderful. You said be real. Yeah. Um, make sure that they they feel what needs to be felt yeah. Um, yeah. during their time there. You know, so many times I think people forget children are a lot more perceptive than we may really realize. Mm -hmm. And they may not always know how to verbalize what's going on at home, but they may not always be coming from the greatest situations, right. you know? And so when they can come to church and find love that is real, love that's not perverted, yeah. love that nurtures, that <laughs> protects, that, that calls yeah. them to mature and grow. Mm -hmm. um, gives them a peace. Yes, absolutely. From such a... Yeah. That it's just that hour or two of peace on Sunday is worth right, that. Yeah. right, yeah. and and even have their confidence ministered to. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, yeah. that's that's one of the things I love about the setup you guys have too. Is you know when we do brain drain and things like that at the end, just how it builds their confidence. You yeah. know, and right. and they feel excited about yep. what they learn. Yep. You know, yeah. and uh, so that's that's so powerful. Well. Um, for those pastors who may be watching, um, youth leaders, children's church pastors, um, Sunday school teachers, um, can we just, just pray for them mm. and uh, pray that God would use this time maybe to give them new insight, um, new ideas, um, a passion to reach further than they've ever reached, to dig deeper than they've ever dug. Yeah. Um, and let's just pray that God will meet them. Maybe there's, there's some in ministry who are weary. Um, maybe there are some who have not known how to navigate this pandemic. Uh, one thing I know about you guys, you've, you've been 
been living on the provision of the Lord. I mean, you basically gave it all up to follow him. And there may be some who they don't know what the next season holds. Um, but can we just pray for them? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we, <laughs> we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. We thank you that it's only through him we have access to you. And that we know that, Lord, when we pray to you, you hear our prayers and hear the cries of everyone out there, every yes. pastor, every youth pastor, every children's pastor, God. You see everything that they face. You see yes. the pressures that they're under. Yes. And God, but we know that you have the answers. And yes. you tell us to come and sit at your feet, feast at your table first. And as we come and sit at your feet and feast at your table, then we'll have something to give to others. So God, teach us and remind us daily to have that intimate relationship with you for, for that empowers us lord to impart something to others that is of lasting eternal value god i pray lord against the spirit of discouragement father yes i, I pray against that spirit of perfection and while we do strive for excellence god we must always remember that that it, when we offer a cup of cold water in your name yes it won't that young man that pastor that youth pastor will not lose their reward yes. and while we don't do it for reward god it's it's comforting to know that the simplest things that we do for building your kingdom father have eternal consequences yes. so god we just thank you father for for each one out there and god just pray your blessing on them i pray that your holy spirit would would, would open their minds to uh, be creative father god and and Father, just sometimes it's just simply using what's available. Yes. And just, uh, it's all we really did. It's just use what was available, what was at our hand, and the staff in Moses' hand, what's that in your hand? Yes. Uh, it doesn't have to be the new, newest, biggest, best, greatest thing, but yes. just simply using that which is in our hands yes. for excellence. And so, God, I just pray that you would just have a heart for that, Lord, and, and take it seriously. Yes. Father, that, that is particularly children's pastors, God, May we have um, a hunger for your word beyond the scope of, of what we share with the kids. Yes. Uh, Father, for the, that's the only way we will be enriched yes. uh, in order to share with, with passion and, and uh, compassion and uh, with an anointing, Lord God, to, to the hearts and lives oh. of, of the kids we minister to. Father, we yes. thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And Sister Kathy, would you would you pray for parents that are out there um, that God would really use them to shape the hearts and minds of their children and for them to take um, that that mandate seriously to to really cultivate a love for the Lord in the hearts of their children. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for this opportunity, God. And we pray for parents. Jesus, I pray that they will, they will just see how valuable they are yes. th th through your eyes and how valuable their children are, that we would take the time, God, that you would take to, to instruct our kids to, to love you and to, to nurture that in, the, in each heart, God. And Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will give them the patience they need to to unwrap whatever the challenges are in their life, God. Just like you did in Genesis when, when Adam and Eve sinned, you, you, you went back and you sorted that whole thing out, God. You took the time. And Jesus, that's when, when, one time when I was asking you, God, I was like, God, I, I don't understand how to do this. You brought me to Genesis and you yes. said, Jesus, God, you, you showed me. Yes. That this is how you unwrap the first sin, mm -hmm. and this is how we have to unwrap the sin and the, the challenges that our kids have, God. And we just need to take the time, God. Jesus, help us to see the value of taking time to unwrap stuff and and, and then instruct our children, God, in the ways of you, God. And the, the biggest thing, God, is give us all a love for your word, God. Help us to fall in love with your word and ask you to unwrap your word to our hearts, God. That, that's Jesus, you are the reason. You're the only answer for our, our challenges today, God. 
And I pray, Lord Jesus, that people will be drawn to you, oh God, who report to, for those answers, and, and that your church will rise triumphant, God. In yes. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, we want to thank you today for joining us for another episode of Meet Me in the Break Room. We pray that you have been blessed and ministered to. And if you have, we want you to reach out and let us know. If you would like more information about the ministry of Kids Turn, you can simply look them up on social media, K-I-D-Z-T-U-R-N, Kids Turn. They tour the nation uh, doing crusades and camps and revivals for children of all ages. So we invite you to look them up. And look, if you're considering having them to your church, let me let you know right now, you will not regret it. It'll be one of the best decisions you've ever made. We thank you guys for joining us. Join us next week, same time, same channel. Until then, may God's absolute best be yours in every area of your life. Y'all have a great week. Thank <laughs> you.